So you know, if you want to date me and stuff, you definitely gotta come. You gotta come. Not, I'm not materialistic, but you gotta come with a buy. You gotta match it. Period. So out to Mary, Smash, Kill, Lemuel, Plumber, Ray J, or Chance. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm an Akinite. She came. She never came to check on me. Yeah. Talk to me. She just did a bunch of club chasing where she had so. Because if you're because, doing that to get on the because show, it's what a would form. you do to me? Now, a lot of people for some reason think that your accent is fake. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny shit. So Real like, island gal. Real island flicking girl. It bo, 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 bo. That's what <laughs> yeah. So what's your relationship with Natalie, um, Tink, and Slim right now? Uh, they all went online talking stuff about me. Biggie was calling me a thief. This one was saying this. I love the experience, but being a Caribbean girl that was planted in the middle of all American girls, it was definitely like the lingo is different. Like one time I asked them, I said, What's up? They told me I wanted to fight. At <laughs> home, <laughs> it's like, you know, like you just so, say hi. <laughs> yeah, and then the code switching became draining. Yeah. Because I got a code switch all day and I live there. So it's yeah. like sometimes when I try to talk, nobody hears. Yeah. And, you know, they talk over because they don't catch that I'm saying certain things or I'm mm -hmm. cracking certain jokes or, you know, because I, I have a certain culture. Yeah. Like, right now, I'm code switching with you. Yeah. So that everybody could, you know what I mean? But if I was in the city, I was like, yeah, what you saying? Could they stand it? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know in Africa and Nigeria, we speak broken pigeon. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, God, how far? Like, what's up? Like, God, how you day? Like, I exactly. know, and I know Bahamian, um, Bahamians, mm -hmm. Bahamians, they have a, a very similar, like, broken English. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally understand, girl. Mm -hmm. I get it. <laughs> get it but the viewers you know they're still trying to understand you more deeply mm -hmm. so for the people who want to know more about you like the fans told me to ask you this so. okay. <laughs> um do you have any kids no i have no kids okay so dia is you know Kidless. zero kids in right now y'all okay no man no kids Hello. no man no that was the next question <laughs> <laughs> so are you for the guys who were like you know, I like Dia. I mean, are you looking to date soon? Or how is your dating life right now? Um, I honestly been, I've been hustling for a while. Um, I'm for guys that look and look like me, like I'm just very strict on my time, my energy, stuff like that, my money. Um, so you know, if you want to date me and stuff, you definitely got to come. You got to come. Not, I'm not materialistic, but you gotta come with a buy. You gotta match it. Period. You see what I'm saying? That just is what it is. Period. Because uh, I got a lot of things to do. I don't like people wasting my time. Mm -hmm. Time is money. So once you waste my time, you waste my money. I kind of lose my patience for everything. Mm -hmm. But I am, you know, I am the kid to date. Period. And there's nothing wrong with a woman having standards. There's nothing wrong with a black woman having standards. I feel mm -hmm. like for some reason, people expect black women to like put up with every and anything. Mm -hmm. But no, like you should date someone who's on your level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I'm mm -hmm. with that. Or, or above. Or above, period. Also rock with that. <laughs> <laughs> so would you date like a rapper? Like for example, if like gonna happen to like inbox you, would you be open to that? Um, I don't know Gunna, cause I like Gunna. I like Gunna. I like his music and stuff, but I wouldn't say particularly like he's my type. Yeah. But I might entertain a date um, to okay. see, like you know, what he's about, what's yeah. going on. Get to know him on a deeper level. Yeah. Okay. And sorry, Gunna, we had to use you for example, but you know, <laughs> I'm trying to get a feel for like if the rappers have a chance. So no, okay. the rappers got a chance, cause I'm a rapper and I, you know. Period. You know, sometimes you need that chemistry when it comes to the absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking in the Chicago area too. Period. Okay. <laughs> it gets a little wild in Chicago now. <laughs> so, how do you feel about people saying that you and Slim were Tink's followers? Because I know a lot of fans felt like they felt like they didn't really get to know you and Slim on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. They felt like you know you guys were kind of um, more so being seen with Tink more so, and mm -hmm. I think maybe DTB kind of maybe started that she did. that um, perception. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about that? Or what do you have to um, say to the fans about that? I feel like even when you watch the show and stuff, you don't see like, if you if people really pay attention, you wouldn't see us together. Tink is a very like, mm -hmm. 
she's very open she gets along with everybody like mm -hmm. you know what i mean tank is that type of person and she's very like very real and very you know live personality everything like that um so you would see her in scenes with different people you know mm -hmm. what i mean me and slim um i don't think i feel like Diamond started that narrative on the internet before mm -hmm. the episodes dropped mm -hmm. to prepare them to follow her narrative, which she created yeah. on the show. Yeah. This was also something new that I had to get used to. You know, yeah. like just knowing the difference between reality TV, yeah, so reality TV and reality. Yeah. Um, and Diamond is very TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? She admitted that off the camera and stuff like that. My thing with Diamond was. Like I keep saying on the show, I'm being on principle. Mm -hmm. And what Diamond did, I wasn't rocking with it. I didn't 100% count her out until mm -hmm. we actually sat at that table and she was so wrong and strong. Mm -hmm. To me now, that's a character fly. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because if I really wasn't rocking with her, I wouldn't even sat there and have that conversation. It's just the way that she was like so cocky about it and so proud of what mm -hmm. she did. She wasn't like, you know what? Yeah, that was wrong. So that's when it came to the point where it's like, if you could do it to her, you could do it to me. And that's how I don't I don't yeah. feel like I lost anything. I'm not a person who rubs shoulders because you got followers, money, or whatever you think you have. I rock with people based on their character. Mm -hmm. So when I saw her on the camera, you know, saying the things she was saying off the camera, she's egging on these fights, doing the most. I just wasn't rocking with her. And I told Diamond, even off camera, like even if Tank talks to you, I won't. Talk you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's just not my, you know, my cup of tea. I yeah, think. and that's that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. You can be cordial with people. You don't have to like everybody, you know? And she had an issue with me just being real with her. Like, it wasn't about following. And then when I said the thing with the super, super clothes, I see a lot of people running with that. Where I from, if you rock with somebody, like I said, Tink, with filming, we had to film. People don't understand, like, you have dark days. So when we got to Bobby Lewis, it was dark days before we actually filmed yeah. the first episode. Mm -hmm. So Tank, me, and Slim, we was in the same way. And we would we had already gotten in deep conversations. Like, they, we spoke about my brother, stuff like that. So like I told you, like, two days in, Tank came to me and she was like, Dia, how you doing mentally? I don't know if God had sent mm -hmm. the, the, um, the, sign. the sign through her. Mm -hmm. But that hit deep with me because I was able to look in the mirror and realize like I'm not okay. So if you rock with somebody like sometimes like I was being sarcastic with that, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, we super super close. We go way back. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And then me and Slim had met in Miami. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we had already connected. We was already hanging out. We had already mm -hmm. talked. And I rock with the way her and energy, the is. energies, and just the whole. And we still friends to this day. We still yeah. talk on a regular basis. And I choose. Who I want in my space, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Diamond Akinai, she came, she never came to check on me, talk yeah. to me. She just did a bunch of cloud chasing weird shit. Yeah. So, so I know Diamond said that like she basically feels like the reason why she fought Tink at auditions was to secure her spot on the show. Mm -hmm. So, do you agree with that? Do you, do you feel like you have to beef with somebody, or there has to be some type of beef for you to have a spot on the show? I feel like. Let me say, I'm not going to knock because I realize that's that's a thing. So I'm not going to mm -hmm. knock how you go about it. Yeah. But it just doesn't mean it's my type of thing. I didn't yeah. fight. I didn't show no tips. I came and I rapped. And I got on. And you, you know stood on business. Saying? Yeah. And I, said, I, I didn't fight nobody. I came there. I was cool. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I spoke up. I got on the show. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, like, I don't agree with what she did. But I'm not going to judge her for what she did. I'm just yeah. not going to be... I don't want you in my space because if you're because, doing that to get on the because show, it's what a would form, you do to me exactly. to make yourself? Because we all have brands and people yeah. need to understand that. We come in yeah. there with brands. Yep. And just like Diamond, Diamond did a lot to my brand going online calling me a follower. Yeah. When you in this business, you have to pay PR to fix what these bitches say. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. All of that is money it costs. And a lot of them came online throwing these narratives to say step on your brand mm -hmm. to save their own. To save their own. And I just, you know. So I know you got into two fights. One with Gretch, and I believe that was the fight that had a lot of people 
feeling on the edge with you mm -hmm. because a lot of people felt like you were bandwagoning because you know all of the girls uh, mainly Jayla wanted to fight Gretch because mm -hmm. of like her saying the n-word but you know you also fought Gretch I believe towards the end and yeah. a lot of people felt like you were being a follower for that so what do you have to say to the fans for you know, that feel that way well the reason honestly the reason I never spoke on the Gretchen situation online mm -hmm. is because me and Gretchen spoke behind closed, closed doors. doors and we had apologized to each other and stuff like that she had a post because what happened earlier that day I felt like Gretchen was, Gretchen was talking shit about me because I was walking past the house yeah. by the time we filmed I was already drunk yeah to be honest so when I got there when I saw like what was going on I'm like shoot this girl been looking for it all day mm -hmm. so what they didn't show is like when she was when Jayla was trying to explain to her like these girls I don't mind they really was hurt to the point yeah I didn't like it either I didn't like it as a I viewer. didn't like it at all I didn't like it as a viewer you see what I'm saying but mm -hmm. they were really trying to explain to her like yo I feel a type of way mm -hmm. and she kept saying I don't give a fuck and I feel like a lot of people don't understand the difference between race ethnicity and like you know culture like mm -hmm. I feel like I understand Gretchen's take on the whole situation I'm from California mm -hmm. so a lot of people in California white black Mexican everyone says the n-word in California mm -hmm. but now that I live in Atlanta and I'm learning more about like black history because you know I did go to high school in Africa so I did kind of miss out on mm -hmm. a lot of history classes but now that I know more about the history, I'm like, it's not okay. Yeah. Because ethnicity is different from race. So I totally understand That's that. True. And I was triggered as a viewer seeing Gretchen say that repeatedly. But I will say, not to cut you off, I did speak to Gretchen. And Gretchen is a very sweet person. And I will say on the record, like, I think that she was a bit misunderstood because like she said, she's used to saying it where she's from. And sometimes changing habits is a bit difficult, even though we was on camera. I think she she actively tried, mm -hmm. but when you get in that mode, it's like sometimes it just slip out and it's like, oh. Yeah, and I oh think she's shit. still you used to I mean? saying I think she's very used to saying it. She's so I know when we were watching, I believe episode nine or ten, um, I know you had to like fly like to Puerto Rico and you had to go through other countries. What happened with that? Okay, so basically I didn't get my tourist visa in time. Mm -hmm. And when you're from the Bahamas, you could fly to the States on a police record because of the relationship. Yeah. But you can't fly from another country back into the States. So when we went to Barbados, I was supposed to go on a private jet to them to Puerto Rico. But when we got there, they was like, where's your U.S. visa? So because yeah. I didn't have my visa, I had to go to London, home, Baham like then back to Miami, then to Puerto Rico. Dang. Yeah. So you definitely put in the work to be there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So now, a lot of people for some reason think that your accent is fake. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's some funny shit. So what do you have to say to that? Because I feel like her accent is real, but when I look in the Zeus comments, they're like, her accent is fake. She's faking. Because they said that when you're rapping, your mm -hmm. English sounds better. But like me being from Africa, my accent comes in and out, like yeah. on its own. It just comes in and mm -hmm. out when it wants to. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say to people who feel like your accent is fake? I think y'all really got to stop talking. <laughs> I think that the world is not used to a Bahamian accent. Yeah. And when they hear Caribbean, they expect Wagwan. Yeah. It's not the third, but that is Jamaican. You know what I mean? Yeah. People aren't used to a Bahamian accent. So, and then on top of that, I did speech training when I was younger and stuff. Yeah. So I'm very good at code switching. And when I go to make music and I go to rap, I'm an artist. It's just like Nikki. Sometimes she raps in Jamaican. Mm -hmm. And Idris Elba, when he, he acts, he can switch from London to American. Like, you know what I mean? So I did a lot of speech training and stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I was on the show, I'm in my natural element. So because I'm, I'm basically living with these girls. So code switching all day, it, it gets tiring. But mm -hmm. when I do music, I get in there and I get in the zone. And I just... I don't know. I can speak proper English. I can speak accent. It goes in and out. But I'm definitely like from the islands. My Period. accent is very real. Period. And, yeah, y'all. <laughs> real that. island girl. Real island flicking girl. It ain't bo, 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 bo. That's what? <laughs> yeah. But you can see the Bahamians are on their ass. Because Bahamians like, bro, her accent is real. They yeah. don't know a Bahamian accent. But welcome yeah. to the Bahamas. Welcome to the Bahamas. Yeah. <laughs> So now, a lot of people like Meatball and, and uh, Tink said that they might not be coming to the reunion. Are you coming to the reunion? And if you are, what is your hit list? 
Um, ooh, you messy. <laughs> you trotsky. I'm done. <laughs> um, I don't, I won't say that. I, I won't lie. Like, I fought Gretchen in the, in the thing. Like I said, I was drunk. I was mad about some stuff and I was drunk. Yeah. Um, but I'm not really an aggressor. Mm -hmm. So I won't even say I have a hit list, but I know that people are coming there and they want to fight me and stuff like that. But I'm like, even in the show, I'm not going to back down. So I'm definitely probably going to be at the reunion. Shoot, depending on how my music go, I did the TGIF remix. It's dropping tonight. Period. So, Featuring um, Glorilla, right? No, it's Glorilla's. I did a remix on her song. Okay. So, shoot, you never know. She might hit up the body from the Bahamas and say, let's do this remix. And then okay. I might not be at reunion. Hey, okay. drop, drop the body. You know? Okay, Glorilla might, you know, make her a star. You, know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I but I, I plan to be there for sure. So do you plan on auditioning for Baddies Midwest or Baddies Love Wild? Um, no. I don't plan on auditioning. I'm very if the opportunity comes and they say, Dia, we want you to come back, mm -hmm. I definitely consider it and you know my management would see like what the deal is on the table and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm an artist, and I realize with reality TV sometimes, it's hard for them to separate reality TV from the artist. Mm -hmm. And I work too hard on my career, and I, I want people to focus on my music. So I'm, I'm a bit iffy with the reality TV thing moving forward. Yeah. So what's your relationship with Natalie, um, Tink, and Slim right now? Uh, I like Natalie. Okay. Natalie, like, I'm a principal person. So even, I would never pick a beef with Natalie because she put food in my mouth. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I am. If you put food in my mouth, whatever it takes to, to keep, I'm not going to pick a beef with you. I'm not going to do that because I feel like that's disrespectful to the platform that she put forward for me to be on. Like, I came from nothing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Tank and Slim, they are my friends. Yeah. I talk to them regularly. Aww. We want to cry. We talk about life. Like, you know Aww. what I mean? We're still very close. That's good. Mm -hmm. So now I know you dropped the diss song. We saw it on Zeus Network, Chow. So who are you dissing in the song? <laughs> see this. The viewers want to know. The song, well, y'all can see the, the pictures on the cover. Yeah. You see they saying. That's who I was dissing on the song. Period. Um, I'm not gonna name drop because go to YouTube and find out. Period. Right Period. Up. But I didn't do that to aggress like to be aggressive. I did it because the next one comes out of nowhere. Speaking of me I'm speaking like, of Biggie, how do you feel about Biggie overshadowing you at eviction? Like when you were being told that you're being evicted, and like you were telling Natalie, like you know what, I don't want to be a replacement. How do you feel like when Biggie was kind of putting herself in your position? I felt like it was so weird. I felt like it was weird. I felt bullied. Um, and at that point, bullying is the word. Yeah, it was. It was definitely giving bullying. I was confused because she had said something that they didn't air that really got to me. She was like, "You're supposed to be the Caribbean princess, and you were busting my wine." And I thought it was very disrespectful. Oh wow! Like only was saying guala guala, and I felt like it was very disrespectful, and it hurt my feelings being from the Caribbean because it's like we not nobody poppy show. Yeah, you're not. You're not just like here just to shake your ass. Yeah, like, you're more than that. I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. I have no problem shaking my ass. I have and, no problem not. And I girls. really hate when like people like sexualize black women. Like we're just here just Stereotype. to entertain you. Like you just, you watch too much TV as far as I'm concerned. Like Caribbean girls just yeah. supposed to whine and speak an accent like. And I think yeah. Biggie recently said that she's not a black woman. So I have no idea. I heard that, that but you know, I can't touch on that. I just want her to leave. Yeah. I honestly just want her to leave me alone because I'm just like. I didn't feel like she had to come at me like that. People was people from home, they was like, why didn't you respond and stuff like that? Yeah. But the scene got cut and we had to leave. So I honestly felt like, why you coming at me like this? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was weird. So I know you got in a fight with Nunu mm -hmm. um, and she basically stated that she was basically fighting for her spot on the show and, and nothing personal. So how do you feel about that? I feel the same way I felt about Diamond. I don't, I don't feel like it was justified. When I fought her, it was honestly like, I just wanted, my thing is I'm big on respect. Mm -hmm. I don't care who likes me. I don't care. Yes. But you're gonna respect me because I feel like for people to be handling me like we're not on the same platform and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You hit me for nothing. And so, it's kind of like a form of clout chasing in a way. Yeah, right? and I don't rate clout chasing. That's just me as a person. Yeah. I know that a lot of people rate it down here like, oh, she did a big one. But me as a person and where I'm from, I don't rate it. 
I don't feel like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like she had the right to hit me and that's why I fought her. People like, oh, why are you running your mouth and you can't fight? Slim had already beat her. Mm -hmm. But I felt like, let me fight for myself. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? I, I didn't like it, I didn't rate it at all. Okay, so we're gonna play a quick game. Now, the baggies, Caribbean girls are drowning and you have to save one person, okay? So let us know who you're gonna save. One? Yes. So Natalie and Scotty are drowning. Who are you gonna save? Mm. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with Scotty so I can send a rope for Natalie to hold her leg. <laughs> no, for true. <laughs> for true. <laughs> so now DTB and Nunu are drowning. Who are you gonna save? Um, no, no. Yeah. Slim and Tink are drowning. Who are you gonna save? I sent in the same rope. The same rope? The same rope. She said she sent in one rope, and whoever grabs rope. it grabs it. No, the two of them grab on each other. Let's go. We outside. <laughs> yeah. And last but not least, Meatball and Nunu are drowning. Who will you save? Um, Nunu. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna play game two: marry, smash, kill. So you have to marry one person, smash one person, and kill one person. Mary Smash Kill, French Montana, Cardi B, or JT? Um, Mary Smash Kill. Mm -hmm. I would marry Cardi. Okay. Yeah, that's my girl. Period. Smash. It would be French Montana because I like women. I like Period. <laughs> Shoot, I don't want to kill JT. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I don't want to kill JT. It'd be like that sometimes. It'd be like I don't want to kill JT though. Ooh. I, yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Okay, yeah. round, round <laughs> two. Round two. Mary, smash, kill. Lemuel, plumber. Ray J, or Chance? <laughs> Girl. What? <laughs> Mary, smash, Mary smash, kill. We got the CEO, Lemuel, plumber. Ray J, or Chance? Route three, little baby, key Glock or gonna marry, smash, kill. <laughs> marry key Glock. Period. I love me a key Glock. I wish Period. I could smash key Glock too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I just throw a shot? This is champagne. Oh, <laughs> marry key Glock, smash little baby, kill. Who the next one is? Uh, gonna. Yeah. Okay, and last round, marry, smash, kill, Nicki Minaj. Glorilla and Sukiyana. Um, Mary Nikki. Okay. Can I smash Suki and Glow? You can do whatever you want. I want to smash Suki and Glow at the same time. Period. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I'm mad at it. I am not mad at it. Now, we are coming to the end of our interview, guys. I'm having such a great time with Dia. She's such a vibe. But um, yeah, for your fans who want to know like what you're going to be doing moving forward with your life and like new music when you're going to be dropping, mm -hmm. what do you have to say to your new fans about like your new music dropping and like you know what you plan on doing moving forward? Well, to all of my new fans, I just want to say I love y'all. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, I'm definitely going to be dropping a lot of new music. We have the TGIF remix that's dropping tonight at 9 p.m. So it's going to be out by the time y'all see this. Make sure I run that up, Ty Glorilla. Um, I also have a new track out that's called Never Run. Period. The nails are giving y'all. I'm like, I need your nail tech ASAP. <laughs> Never Run. Make sure y'all go and run that up. But I, I'm going to be dropping a lot of remixes, a lot of music, because Dia is, I'm an artist. Okay? Period. Um, She's an artist first and a baddie second. Yes. <laughs> Period. You get it. I like that. I like that. Okay. <laughs> you know, I just press on the body seconds. So find the music up. You can find me on all platforms on the It's Dia. No apostrophe on the It's because nobody owns me, period. Period. And follow me on Instagram at The Real It's Dia. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dia, so much for blessing our podcast, our first episode. We are so glad to have you. Thank you and cheers. Cheers. More success, more opportunities. Period. And we hope to see you on our screens in the near future. Period. Yes. <laughs> But true. <laughs>